Good evening and welcome to the meeting of the Evanston Plan Commission. Um, we have two, two items, uh, te text amendments on our agenda, the minutes and appointment of committees and election of officers tonight. I see we have some new staff here and if they could be introduced, that would be terrific. Good evening, Plan Commission members. To my right is our new neighborhood and land use planner. Did I get that right? Demir Latinovich. Um, he comes to us from Downers Grove. Thanks, Melissa. Um, as she mentioned, I, uh, I was with the Village of Downers Grove before here. I was there for about seven and a half years or so, so I was staffing the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Plan Commission. So it seems like I will be staffing this commission from now on, I think starting next month. So I'm looking forward to meeting all of you. And uh, if there's any questions, obviously, let us know. Welcome. We also have a new staff attorney, uh, Mario Trito, to my left. And he joined the city about three weeks ago. And he will also be staffing the plane commission going forward. And welcome to you also. What was your name again, sir? I'm sorry. It's uh, Mario Tretto. Thank you. Um, you have all received a copy of the minutes of our last meeting. Are there any corrections or motions to approve? Chairman, uh, we appear to have an anomaly in the minutes. On page four, we adjourned. Then we acted on the standards. Then we adjourned again. Um, we either need to correct the minutes by striking Commissioner Asaro's motion to adjourn, or we need to, I would think, adopt the minutes, in which case the action on the standards will be null and void because we had already adjourned, and on a motion to reconsider, bring those back up and adopt them. My recollection is that this is, in fact, what happened. All right. Um, so is that a, a motion to correct the minutes? Yeah, I would move to correct the minutes by striking the first adjournment. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Are there any other corrections? Minutes are approved as corrected. That brings us to the first item on the agenda, and I'll ask staff to address it for us. Good evening, commissioners. At the November 20th, 2013 Zoning Committee meeting, staff and the Zoning Committee members discussed a proposed text amendment to alter the definition for educational institutions to allow the zoning definition to cover vocational training facilities. Coming out of that meeting, um, the zoning committee as well as staff ha now has a new recommendation to make business or vocational schools its own zoning definition with its own zoning use, land use regulations. So at this point, the recommendation is to allow business or vocational schools as special uses in all R, B, D, I, O, and O, R, P, and T districts and permitted uses in all C, M, and U districts. The use categories follow the similar regulations of educational institutions, except that within the industrial districts, the office district, and the research park, uh, educational, educational institutions are not allowed or special, they are not permitted or special uses. However, for business or vocational schools, they would now be special uses in the I districts and S districts and research park districts. The idea is that certain business or vocational schools may be of an intensity that fits well with those districts. Um, for instance, there could be a business or vocational school that teaches automobile repair that could 
potentially be a good use for an industrial area. We wouldn't typically be seeing young kids doing something like that, wouldn't have to worry about that type of situation occurring. So in addition to those land use regulations, we are proposing the definition for business or vocational school, which would be a privately owned or publicly owned post-secondary school other than a community college or four-year college university institution, <laughs> providing occupational or job skills in a variety of technical subjects and trades for specific occupations. Additionally, to clean up the zoning ordinance, we would then amend the definition for college and university institution so that it also reads other than business or vocational schools so that this text amendment would not specifically prohibit um, an existing or, or new college or university from having such use. How are we defining a business school? On page two. Where was that on page two? It, it's just above the second chart. It's the definition that I just read out. Yeah. You know, that's the problem with these things, you know, it's like the... Also to add... Um, so is Kellogg a business school? Um, not by this definition. It would be it's part of a university use. However, if it were, if it did fit in this definition, it would still be permitted um, because it's part of the university. Okay. And additionally, just to mention, there is a uh, facility that is in the process of opening at 990 Grove that it is currently opening at a very small scale as a um, what would be a business or vocational school at this small scale similar to other uses in the city we considered an office use but they're looking to expand to a couple hundred students at which point we would want to have this definition and use set up Go ahead. Chairman, I think we've got a little grammatical problem in the definition that might have create a substantive problem. A privately owned or publicly owned post-secondary school, A, singular, providing occupational or job skills in a variety of technical subjects. If I read that correctly, it would mean that a school offering only one technical subject didn't meet the standard. I think what we mean is offering, providing occupational or job skills in one or more technical subjects and trades. I think that, that clarifies it. I'm a little concerned that the definition assumes four-year college, um, leaving, leaving out possible graduate colleges. You might, we might consider adding the words and, and graduate college slash university institution <coughs> or, or graduate. So it would read other than a community college, four year or postgraduate college slash university institution. Chairman Peters, one other suggested edit to my own um, drafting. I could, we could strike in the definition four year 
and just leave it with college university because that's defined and it doesn't limit it to four year. Okay, that works. <clears throat> that solve your concern? And that would encompass graduate. So we solve you know, solve that both. problem. Yeah. It, it gets a little dicey with, with, for example, nursing schools, which can be the subject of four-year degree-granting programs or shorter programs, but without wanting to complicate it, I think that works. Chairman Peters, would you also like me to strike then other than a community college and just have it say college or university? No, I think it has to okay. be. Uh, I think I think we, we probably don't want to treat community colleges as business schools. <laughs> that is the trend, but. I'd anticipate an increasing number of people will be doing their first two years at community colleges. Any other questions or comments from the commissioners? Uh, does anyone, a uh, member of the public, have anything to say? Is there any discussion? Are there any motions with respect to this draft ordinance as amended? What am I the designated mover? Okay. <coughs> mover and move, shaker move, forward, please. Move to adopt the um, whatever it is. The staff will make up the words of the motion as presented <laughs> by staff and amended by us. So you're moving to to recommend moving to, moving to recommend the draft approval. ordinance. Yes. As uh, as changed. Any discussion on that motion? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye. That passes. Unanimously. Good to see you. We have another um, item. Text, proposed text amendment on the agenda. The next proposed text amendment relates to the regulation of air conditioning equipment. Currently, Stay air conditioning down. equipment is regulated as uh, not being allowed in front yards and with a 10 foot setback from side and rear yards. This has proved to be a problem for many homeowners uh, and has become a hardship on staff given the number of variance requests that have come in. Given the typical zoning lot in Evanston, many lots are not wide. Uh, and when you look at adding a 10 foot setback on each side, there's a very small area where you can place an air conditioning unit. And then if you add in uh, a typical deck or patio, it often becomes impossible for residents to comply, thus they seek variances. Um, in the past year, staff has received, I believe, seven variance requests for air conditioners and six of those were approved. Um, and the majority of them are somewhat close to, to 10 feet. They just can't make that 10 feet. So following the November 20th, 2013 Zoning Committee meeting, city staff and the Zoning Committee make the following recommendation. We are suggesting that the general rule of thumb is changing the 10 foot setback to an eight foot setback, however, it can be lowered to a six foot setback when air conditioning equipment is located within two feet of the principal structure and obscured from view by screening methods such as landscaping. Additionally, we are suggesting that when there is an interior side yard that abuts an alley of at least eight feet in width, that setback can drop to four feet when the unit is within two feet of the principal structure and screened appropriately. 
and when in a street side yard, so that would be, um, it's not your front yard, but you are abutting a street, we are suggesting that you can have a four foot setback also when located within two feet of the principal structure and appropriately landscaped. The idea behind these regulations is that um, number one, given the um, noise regulations that are stated in the mechanical code, decibel levels for common units should not exceed what that what that noise level is when at the property line and that's described in a little more detail in the chart showing decibel levels in the packet and that with proper screening um, noise shouldn't be so much of an issue when you're adjacent to an alley or a street side yard so this i think is the second time i've dealt with this in my tenure here, right? This came up maybe six years ago, five years ago? When was the ordinance, was the ordinance modified once before? Um, it, that may be the point that it was modified regarding uh, adja being adjacent to an alley. It wasn't, it wasn't the side of next but, to another property? No. It was just the alley? The, okay. That has been 10 feet since at least the 1993 zoning ordinance. Okay. And uh, just to note additionally, uh, one thing that was not discussed at the zoning committee level that is a recommendation tonight, there is currently a regulation in the zoning code that gives a five foot setback for window air conditioners. In my time with the city that has never come up, uh, there have not been any complaints on it. It would be an awfully difficult thing to enforce most houses in Evanston, if they have a window unit, that window unit would be within five feet. Um, it's just, it would be an awfully difficult thing to do. Uh, we are suggesting completely taking that out of the zoning ordinance. Now that means if there was a complaint about it, it would refer back to um, the decibel levels as the mechanical code follows. Discuss. Any discussion? Um, I have issue with uh, the, the side of the house adjacent to another house. Um, from a from a from a decibel perspective, and I and I don't necessarily think screening helps um, because sound goes up, and most air conditioning units have that fan, and the sound goes up, and. There's no way to screen, uh, people generally don't screen against that. So if you have a neighbor next to you that's got a unit and there's a fence between you and that unit that can be a, an effective screen, um, if, you're, if your bedroom is above that unit. Um, are, are you objecting to the distancing requirements yes, or the, the decibel di requirements? The, dis the distancing requirements. I don't necessarily think we should change that on the side of it. Now, I was not at the conversation at the zoning meeting. I was not at that meeting. I think that was when we had the conflict with the economic development meeting. So I, I, I did miss the, the comments and the discussion there. If you'd like to enlighten me and the rest of the members that were not at that meeting that might have that issue. Well, the, the problem is when the distances are really small I, uh, and, and, and to to be less than the, uh, between four and eight feet, it has to be within two feet of the principal residence. So that would mean there is only six feet. Mm -hmm. And there are lots that would be simply precluded from having air conditioning. Or air conditioning placed between the homes well, uh, instead uh, of in the backyard. There are lots without backyards. Well, under the under the ten foot standard, a twenty five foot lot, there's only one location where you can put the air conditioner because if you move it either way, you you're within ten feet of your property then. And all I'm suggesting is then that 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 should still be a special. You still should have to come in for uh, a a, um, a variance on that. Just to clarify, in, in the case when you have two houses next to each other, that would be an interior side yard. So the, the proposal is that it would be either an eight-foot setback if there is no screening or a six-foot six setback if there is screening. 
and and e at the eight foot distance according to the uh, decibel level chart they would be in compliance at, with what the suspected maximum decibel level would be so it it would be close with if you're talking about six feet with landscaping The, this chart was comprised using. Oh, please. Is that how you do it? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> Mine on. Yeah. Okay. So so the so it's not regulated by decibel level. It's just a s supposition that that is approximately what it would be, and it would be dependent upon on the equipment selected, the efficiency of it. Etc. Correct. What staff did was comprise a table with decibel levels and used the decibel level logarithm to determine what those levels would be at those distances. Uh, now, but there, there is also a decibel level requirement in the mechanical code. Right. So, so in reality, if there is a complaint, city staff goes out with a decibel meter and gets a reading. Now, part of the problem is ambient noise levels often exceed anything they're trying to measure anyway so it's it's hard to get a reading and it's it's really hard to get a, a reading of less than 65 decibels okay. anywhere okay but if someone had a fan that was out of balance and it was making lots of noise or something like that they could be then, then they would be in violation be. of the mechanical okay. could be in violation but we've, we've run into the issue numerous times where a neighbor does not want to uh, you know call and complain about uh, another neighbor and so I predict that this is another one of those issues. We just talked about the onus on the neighbor about the, um, in the conversations about the B&B ordinances and not having neighbors wanting to complain about other neighbors and, and all that. And, you know, I don't. I'm not complaining about my neighbors, but you know their 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 units are much farther than this. We have good distance between us, and they bug the heck out of me if I'm sleeping in the summertime with the window open. And to me, enabling somebody to be closer would be a very frustrating thing, and infringe on my um, on uh, noise levels or or my restful sleep. So I, I, I don't know if I'm in favor of reducing the ordinance. I mean, you're saying we've had seven this year? I believe so. And one of them was denied. Why was the one denied? The one that was denied was because there was a compliant location available. And, and in your briefing says it was two tenths of a foot from the lot line. Uh, correct. It, it was actually a, a case that went to the zoning board for two units that were illegally placed without a permit. Um, so they were already in place 0.02 feet from the property line, I believe. And their other side yard was fairly extensive. So the zoning board found that they did not meet the standards for a variance. Is it Chairman, go ahead. So, so I, I you know, I, I feel, Seth, that, uh, we, you know, people have a reasonable right to enjoy their property, which is to, to have air conditioning, even if it's a narrow lot. But what I, what I don't like is, the, is that if there is a, a better spot available, such as a rear yard or something, and not a side yard that's right next to a house, there's no way to enforce that if there if this is allowed i mean they're just going to do the most practical thing for them at the expense of their neighbor so that's a concern this is being brought because you've had these seven this isn't being brought because there, there was no aldermanic reference it, it is purely a staff initiated text amendment based on the the, the workload that staff sees relating to the specific regulation. Now, Seth, your, your only disagreement is with the interior side yard? Yes. Or the side yard on a, uh, or a side yard next to another house, yes. And, and is yours also limited to the interior side yard? Uh, I, I guess that would be the consequence of it, where it's adjoining another property and there's a better 
Yeah, I, mean, I guess if you're adjoining another property and it's in your backyard, I would have the same issue. Meaning that if the side, if the backyard was as wide as the side yard, I'd have the same issue. It's the joining property is what the issue I have, and the infringements on the rights of of, of that uh, of the adjoining property. But sounds as though where I mean, if one has adjoining properties, where is one to put the air conditioner? Only in the backyard. It's either it's only in the backyard, or you come in and you ask for the variance. I'm. I'm we do I, have I, a problem here of balancing the rights of the property owner versus the rights of the neighbors, don't we? It seems to me that we're being unnecessarily restrictive on property owners if, on a reasonably sized lot in Evanston. A reasonable location for an air conditioner on that lot requires you to come in for a variance. It seems to me, I think we ought to avoid variances for sort of normal things. Don't get me started on garages. <laughs> you know, um, we had seven this year. What did we have the year before? I mean, this ordinance has been there a long time, and I, I just don't want to see it. Uh, um, adjacent yard, uh, adjacent property, the, the space shortened? I would say seven is the average per year. Um, another way to put it in perspective is most things in a side yard have a five foot setback and in a rear yard have a three foot setback. So uh, potentially you could, right at the back of your house, put a deck or a patio three feet away from your property line where you could then have a party on it, et cetera, but you could not have an air conditioning unit there. Well, yeah, but the party is going to last you a couple hours. The air conditioning is going 20, could go 24-7 for three months um, True. every year. And we have ordinances against too much noise. For the party, but Lenny, do you want to weigh in on this? Uh, I, I mean, I, I tend to I, I tend to agree with uh, Commissioner Ford, um, but I, I, you know, it's I think it's a tough call. Um, it sounds to me, or it, it, it based on what I've read, um, I, I don't think staff's recommendation is um, unsupported, and. Um, it just seems like the pendulum has maybe just swung a little bit this way. So I really wouldn't have a, a problem with it. Um, you know, so if one side of the house, they don't want to put it on that side of the house and there's nobody on that side, but you can go put it on the other side that you have a neighbor because that's where you happen to want it. Um, and you can then infringe making it even closer to that neighbor. I, I, you know, there's nothing in here saying, you know, it's, it, it's all what the, I, I understand that the homeowner should have an option and decide where he puts things or she puts things, but I still think the other homeowner. I've just lived next to these things that have been very, very loud. So Do you, you object to, to the eight foot setback? I think it should be t uh, left the same at the 10. I don't think you should reduce it. But I'm one vote, so. Again, I've just lived next to very noisy ones, so I have experience with it, where I'd wish the damn thing would be turned off so I, it doesn't wake me up at night or I could sleep with the window open. I, I have a question. Yeah, so do I. Thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. My, my question is, so for, for the, the situation that um, Commissioner Freeman just indicated, What's in the process? If there's a change to eight feet, then for somebody who wants to install or put in an air conditioning unit um, in that situation, what's walk us through the process? 
So the applicant would come into the city and they could obtain an over-the-counter permit. It comes to the zoning office, we look at the location that they're proposing. If it's compliant, we sign off on it then and there and they walk out with their permit. If they don't have a compliant location, that's when they go through the variance process, which would take anywhere from five weeks to eight weeks, depending on what kind of variance it is. So. Um the change would mean that an adjacent property owner wouldn't know, uh, wouldn't realize that there is a problem or an issue until after the permit is issued. Correct. Is there something that can be done to, um, is there a mechanism that can be put into the procedure to give Potentially, what we could require there? written approval from a neighbor, but we wouldn't have a way of verifying that that neighbor truly signed off on it. These, these were all well. You, you would. You would. You could say that it has to be certified or notarized, and if somebody came in with a false signature, it's probably not going to be worth procuring a false signature. But I, I don't mean that like add on. I, I mean, I, I, I personally. I would be okay because I'm just used to noise, so it, it really, you know, for me. But I, I understand the situation. I, I think that if there's a way to, to strike a balance so that if there is a situation, because I'm assuming someone who installs one of these is not going to do it in a way that's going to be disrespectful of their neighbor. Yeah, it's just how I think. So if there's a way to put it, I'd go to my neighbors and say, this is what I'm thinking about doing. Um, you know, what are your thoughts? I want to make sure that everybody's happy. Um, but, you know, everybody isn't that way, and some people may just object just to object. Uh, is there anything that can be done to protect someone in that situation? Of course, staff could relay that information to the property owner, which um, typically we do anyway. I mean, one of the number one things that we say is, remember, you want to be a good neighbor. You have to live next door to these people. Mm -hmm. So we can encourage them to talk to their neighbor about it. Other than that, I'm open to suggestions. Are, are these all minor variations? No. Um, the majority of them are. Um, for one, staff works with um, these cases to find the most compliant location possible, which would most often bring it into the realm of being a minor variance, because most people don't need to put it one or two feet from a property line. They, in most cases, they're looking at um, about six and a half, seven feet. Um, but occasionally there are cases that do go to the zoning board, and in those cases, they usually don't move forward unless their neighbors are supportive of it and give written support or show up at the zoning board hearing. Mr. Lewis? So I, I just like to get an idea of what the what we're really arguing about with so so the supposition is that we're moving from a property line decibel level of fifty five, which you're saying is basically the ambient noise level to sixty five D B is what what does that mean? Is that like me talking like now or screaming or what? Regular talking is around sixty decibels. That's also not before us. It's already been enacted. Could you, I mean, because every, every house or property is situated differently from lot lines. So there could be a situation where um, someone could put an air conditioning unit, say, on the side of their house and it would be, say for example, 10 feet, it'd be 10 feet or more than the eight, right? But say they choose to go on the other side and they would be less than 10, but they'd be eight. Could, could, it, could we, could, could the language, I guess, be modified to say that they have to, to basically put it in the location that is either the, and it's late and my brain's kind of fried, but you know what I mean? If there's an option to put it so at 10. So the most 10, compliant. Yeah, if there's an option to put it at 10, then that's where they should put it, assuming that distance is going to make a difference in sound. But if there isn't, then they could go with the lesser distance. What's being proposed? Because I could see a situation, for example, um, and I've, you know, 
it, it does come up. There are rare situations. I've litigated things like this where one property owner just wants to exact some revenge on another property owner. So one property owner lives on the corner. Let's say they want to install an air conditioning unit. They could easily put it on the side that runs along the street, but they decide, I don't like my neighbor next door. I'll put in the air conditioner there. It's in eight feet because I can do it. You see what I'm saying? If the objective is to give them the air conditioning unit without as much problem, I get that, and that's what I'm in support of. But if there's an alternative location to put it in, then... The potential problem that I see with that is um, how do you define if there really is a compliant location? Or can we as staff tell them that they need to remove some landscaping to fit it in that compliant location? Or can they say, I plan to build a deck over there so I can't put it over there? It, it could raise problems for staff in how we implement it. And then if that's an enforcement issue, I didn't, I didn't think that that was part of what we were discussing. I'm assuming they're coming in and they have to fill out a form that says, we want to install this air conditioning unit, and then one of the questions is going to be basically, I mean, several of the questions are going to be designed to determine whether or not they're going to be in compliance, right? So if they're going to lie or falsify the form, they could do it already by saying that they meet the compliance because no one's going to go out and check it, right? For an air conditioner? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, there, inspections are done due to the electrical component so th there are visual inspections done to make sure that it's in the location proposed that, but, but we actually go out and, and measure are we going to do somebody, not measure the decibels so, unless there's a complaint not the decibel the, the, the distance is someone going to go out and measure the distance uh, that it's compliant if it obviously looks non-compliant then we do otherwise no so i i think it's self-policing either way you know what i mean you guys aren't going to, I mean, we don't have the capacity to enforce every single one and, and measure. So my point is, is that if the rule says you have to be either, you know what I mean, 10 feet, if that's an, if that's an alternative, or if not, you can <coughs> fall under the 8 feet um, requirement, then you could do that. But you can't, if you have, but if you have the option, you have to go with the 10 feet. You see what I'm saying? It, it just, it's sort of, it's self-policing, and hopefully the applicant's going to follow the rule. Um, and I understand we're not looking, I mean, we can't, you know, spend the resources to enforce it. I'm just trying to, I, I understand Commissioner Friedman's proposal. I'm just trying to see if there's a an, an, an simple, efficient, easy way to strike a balance, you know, to satisfy uh, somebody. Because, I mean, really the recourse for that property owner um, is to file a lawsuit. So now you're basically shifting the burden of spending the time and money to basically protect certain rights on the property owner who has a problem and I but I again I don't think it's necessarily fair to have it where the property owner wants to put in the air conditioner and has to spend the time and resources to come in here to get an approval that they're going to get 90 percent of the time anyway just a thought I I would um I, I think an eight foot setback is is reasonable and um, for the six foot setback there's a requirement that it be within two feet of the principal structure uh, maybe we get around the, the problem by also requiring that no uh, eight foot no no location is is uh, available eight feet from the property line or you can also have the two foot requirement as well on that eight foot. Yeah, well, you have the. the right now, the two foot requirement is only on the six foot. You could do that. So, so. so if, you, you, if you have a two foot. Okay, sorry. So that would, uh, if you did it with the, the two foot, you could have applied to with two feet within the principal structure for, for anything less than 10 feet, and then anything less than eight feet. Uh, no, no other location is available. A, a question? Yeah. What is the diameter typically of one of these gadgets? I mean, they're like this. 
If I had to guess, I would say they're one and a half feet. Uh, yeah, about I was going to say two feet by two feet square, typically. Okay, so I've got two feet from the building, and then I've got two feet of machinery, and then I've got six feet. And I'm living on a 25 foot lot, and that seems like such luxury. <laughs> they have that much space to put an air conditioner. Um, I well, I appreciated Commissioner Asaro's sort of comment in passing. I'm used to noise. <laughs> um, if living on living on 25 foot lots, we're used to noise. On one side, it's an air conditioner. On the other side, it's parties, and it just it is what it is. Um, I would I think the staff has come up with a fairly reasonable solution here um, that looks out for the neighbor and doesn't make it a real administrative burden for them and for the property owner who wants to put in an air conditioner and at such point as we move this thing I'll vote for the staff's recommendation you know I, th I hear you on living with noise but if you didn't have it there and then all of a sudden you do have it there, that's a big difference. So that's, that's my perspective on noise. I lived on Lakeshore Drive for 12 years. Could, I could sleep through the, the ninja bikes going through at four in the morning. But once you go to suburban living and you get the quiet um, going from crickets to the compressor of the air conditioner popping on every few minutes or every 20 minutes and again that's my perspective why don't you just take a straw vote i mean i'm probably the only one who's has this opinion as it looks like so didn't we all move to evanston because we didn't want to move to the suburbs how, how many people <laughs> yes, would, that, would, that, that is true that's why i moved here yeah. how, how many my wife would, would support the <laughs> the recommendation as it's come to us from the staff Um, is there further discussion? I have a question. Who is the arbiter of uh, screening methods, appropriate screening methods? Because there, there are screening methods like chain link fence with the equivalent of Venetian blinds run through on a diagonal. It, it would be as determined by city staff, and what we do is we we would write directly onto uh, the site plan that we're approving what kind of landscaping materials, generally speaking. So it might say screened by four foot evergreens, something to that effect. But a chain link fence would not do it. Other questions or discussion? Is there a motion? Motion to approve staff recommendations. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Nay. So the uh, motion passes with uh, one vote against. Sorry, guys. The, the next uh, order of business is is the Tone election of over. officers Tone and over. appointment of people to committees. Uh, we'll start with the chair office. Mr. Chairman, on the principle that if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I will nominate Scott Peters for another term as chair. Second that. A hearty second. Thank you. Uh, any other nominations for chair? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, that brings us to vice chair. Currently, that is Rich. Yeah. He has relayed that he right. would be acceptable to a renomination. I would like to renominate Rich. Richard Schur. Any discussion or other nominations? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, that brings us to committees. Uh, zoning committee. Zoning committee. Are we talking about the uh, chair of that? No, we're talking about members. Members, right. Okay. 
When do they meet? Uh, they have typically been meeting in the evenings. Usually it's the third thurs third Wednesday of the month at I, I will continue. As long as I don't have conflicts with my economic development, which I'd also like to continue on. I'll volunteer. Okay. Now, isn't the recommendation for all new plan commission members that's, to... That's been the tradition. The tradition has been that all new plan commission members serve on the zoning committee. I will tell you that it was a, a good education. Mr. Lewis has agreed, and, and I will also be on that committee. Yeah, it really is. It's a good experience. Um, I, I'd like uh, Rich to continue as, as chair. He's done a Do we do job. that or do we do that at the committee level? I don't know that the rules provide for, for that. Well, we Since we are the committee, committee I, would, I will second that. But I think it's at the committee level you do that. We're concurring over here. Hang on one second. Do we do that at the committee level for zoning? Vote on the chair? Why, why, where the why they are, beer why they are reading the, the instructions. Um, comprehensive plan committee is, is probably going to be fairly time consuming. Um, and it has been meeting in the morning, which has worked pretty well early in the morning. Um, and I assume you'll you'll continue, mm -hmm. and and I'll continue on that committee. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to be on the comprehensive plan committee? Is it a once a month? Um, it will mostly be once a month. And, and and we'll get Rich to do it too. I'll serve. Great. Um, if you want to jump back to the zoning committee issue, uh, we can go ahead and uh, pick a chair for the zoning committee. Uh, Rich has indicated that he would have no problem continuing that. And also to note, currently you're at six members for the zoning committee, which would raise the quorum level to four, just as an FYI. <laughs> it's a very polite way to <laughs> state something else. <laughs> I, I, I can, I can, if you'd like, I can just, just stay with economic development and if, you, if you're recommending we reduce the size, if that's what that is. That works and avoids the conflict. What? That avoids the conflict. There's a, usually a, one or two conflicts a year. Okay. Um, we need some liaisons. I believe you have always wanted parking committee. Can, can I trade zoning for parking? You can, tr as far as I'm concerned, you'd, you'd be a terrific liaison for parking. <sighs> okay, I was, that wasn't on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Voss, here I come. So, well, well, Seth can be our liaison to parking. They're all laughing in the, uh, in the gallery over here. <laughs> Staff is chuckling. Can you find out why there's only four meters? Uh, he's asking me already a question. Why there's only four, four meters with they're coming? Um, housing community development. It's Ricky Voss. Is, is, he's <laughs> <laughs> who, who is interested in, in um, housing and community development? One point to note. Uh, Chairman Freeman, your second term ends March 14th, 2014. Oh, that's right. But associates, if I'm an associate, I can still be on a representative for a committee, correct? 
uh, I believe you can be a lia liaison Based because you don't vote for that committee. Oh, we'll, we'll leave it that way for now and figure out if there's any problems later. Uh, housing community development. I'd be interested. When do they meet? When, when, when does that meet? Mark, can you describe housing community development for those who aren't familiar with it? Mark Munzer, Director of Community Development. Housing and Community Development, um, they meet on a Tuesday, I believe it's the second Tuesday of, of every month. I will say that most of, they don't have most of their meetings. Their primary function is in the fall when they allocate the CDBG funds that the city of Evanston is uh, allocated every year. So basically there's there's a four meetings, I believe, there in September, and there's about 10 organizations that come in and make presentations as to their programs and as to um, the amount of funding that they're seeking under CDBG. And then there's a fifth meeting, it's either the fourth or the fifth meeting that they allocate those funds. I, and it's know, chaired chaired by uh, Alderman Rainey. I know uh, Stuart Obadike has has served on it, and I think would be willing to continue. I I believe that had been indicated to me by um, the staff person. I think I think he's he's done a good job with it. Um, brings us to P and D. When, when do they meet? Immediately before City Council, um, typically the second and fourth Mondays of the month at 7.15 p.m. And just to note, of all, of all these committees and the liaisons, it does not mean that you are required to go to every one of those meetings. It means when there is pertinent information, you may want to go. Are you? I had you are never, more than welcome have, to go to every one. No, I have never been told that. <laughs> In these six years, I was never told that. Wow. With economic development, it's obviously closely tied. But if, if there's cases that are not at all tied to this, you're never required to go. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. And just to be clear, this wouldn't be membership on P&D. That's a city council only committee. So it would just be as a liaison, possibly to present different discussion items. P&D. P&D is planning development. It, uh, any uh, matter related to planning and development typically matters that come out from the Planning Commission ZBA. It's the working committee of City Council and they make, make a recommendation to full council. Okay. It's held immediately preceding City Council meetings. Okay. You want to do that? What time is it? 7.15. For second and fourth Mondays. When? 7.15 p.m. Is it before the council meeting? Twice meetings? a week? Twice a month? Twice a month. Before the it's council meeting? That's twice a month. That's not doable. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, just to clarify, in my time here, I... What's that? What if we put two liaisons, one for one Monday and one for the other Monday, and Actually, it works. You were, you were going to say something? Liz? Do we have to stay for the whole meeting? No. T typically, P&D meetings last anywhere from five minutes to maybe an hour. Um, and in, to clarify, in my time here, I don't think we've ever had a liaison actually go to a P&D meeting. <laughs> but it potentially could be helpful if, if a recommendation is made on a text amendment or a plan development that might need more explanation on why the board did something. Staff would, of course, relay that in a memo. But if you guys would feel more comfortable having a representative there, that would be a case. So it's two to it's it's before each city council meeting right right i staff the committee so i could answer these types of questions so it's it starts at 7 15 it's typically an hour um and i would expect the liaison would speak to contentious issues in which you had a lot of participation from the community but also in my time here the liaison has never come okay well, it would not be a large volunteer. time commitment. I don't want to volunteer for something that <laughs> with, with that such. Low we do not have high expectations. We have I, I would do it. Before? I would do it. Okay. Who was okay. the liaison before? Currently, it is Commissioner Updike. 
So we have we have filled that position. Um, one more one more liaison left. Economic development, or it could be education, given the abbreviation. What is it? Economic development. Well, I've been on it. F I can continue if you if if I if I could. If you want to pass it off to somebody else, we can pass it off to somebody else. I quite enjoy that. Uh, when does that meet? It meets on Wednesday a month, and it's the. This is the what Wednesday of the month. The it's second? I believe it's typically the third, third. Wednesday of the month it's because third. it falls at the same time as zoning committee. It doesn't. It, it's only occasionally the same time as zoning, so it's the week before. So it's the second. Well, is this the second Wednesday? This is the second. Hang on, I'll look it up. <clears throat> occasionally, they do meet on Thursdays. Oh, has Come has. On. They meet on the fourth Wednesday of the month. There you go. Typically. <laughs> there you go. So do you want to continue that? I would love to continue. During your term? Okay. And I may have... Nobody else that wants it. I may have missed. Did we pick a liaison for the place names? No, we didn't. Uh, this Act, is a, actually, it's not a liaison. It's the chairman of the place names. You get a, They even come in with a gavel. I've been that for the last two years. It's kind of cool. You get a gavel. What, what is Call it? the meeting to order. Place name, dude. Uh, place name, um, uh, I think the alderman can make, is it one or two recommendations a year? This is the honorary place name? It's the honorary place names uh, that, you know, when somebody distinguished or undistinguished in Evanston gets a street named after them. And it comes, uh, the alderman is supposed to come and make a recommendation and, and uh, fill out some forms, and we generally always approve it. It's actually a lot of fun. And sometimes you go to the uh, unveiling of the, uh, uh, of the street name, of the place names. and So is there anyone anxious to? <laughs> OK. We'll put you down for it. It, it, it's kind of fun, especially, you know, when families come in and, and, and make the presentations. I mean, I would rec highly recommend it. I mean, you know, families will come in and make a recommendation for, fa you know, a mother or a father or a businessman. And Sounds good. It's, it's actually rewarding. Probably, probably um, after your term's up, I might want to do economic development. Okay. While we're trying to coordinate it with the comprehensive plan makes makes some sense to me okay any other positions left I think we have it all covered is there any other business uh, motion would be great motion would be great second all those in favor Aye. Aye. I have a question for the note for the emails, the notices that we get, like for meetings and everything. Is it possible to send <coughs> Outlook meeting invites instead, or in addition to the emails, <coughs> only because um, you could see it? I could see it right in my calendar, and I don't have to flag the email and then put it in. I mean, I know it's kind of, but. Is no, that's that's no problem at all. We can do that, and so look within the body of the meeting request for the link to the packet. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Six years yeah. in, we get that. Thanks. And if you can do um, Google Calendar, that would be terrific too. <laughs> but if not, what we'll read the email. I think sometimes you get the option of adding to a Google Calendar. Okay. Any other business? Motion to you adjourn. You can import your Google Calendar from here, I believe. Oh. You'll have to show me. All those in favor? Meeting adjourned. <laughs>